ever pondered on the philosophies of the ancient school of Nath Yoga? Are you curious about the origins of the renowned Kriya Yoga? Are you eager to unravel the philosophy of the mystical Aghoris, often shrouded in misunderstanding? Namaste, I'm Anshuja and I welcome you to Bharat Utsav. Today marks the unfolding of the second chapter in our enthralling three-part series delving into the essence of the six immortal schools of yoga. But first, let me introduce you to a remarkable individual, Guru Pashupati, whose incredible journey led him to the mystical realms of the Himalayas. Guru Pashupati, also known as Ashwin Chekava, embarked on an extraordinary adventure with his Guru, Mahavtar Babaji, trekking on foot from Varanasi to the Himalayas. In the remote corners, Guruji underwent intense training in immortal yoga exploring the profound teachings of the six immortal schools, Aghora, Nath, Giri, Siddha, Vajra and Naga Yoga. Under Babaji's guidance, he delved into the depths of Vedic wisdom, mastering texts like the four Vedas, 108 Upanishads, 64 Tantras, 18 Puranas and more. Initiated into the Trilok Akhara, Guruji received the name Pashupati, symbolizing his life's purpose to lead people away from their animalistic impulses and towards their highest human potential. Henceforth, he became known as Guru Pashupati. In this episode, we embark on a fascinating journey with Guruji, who will unveil the profound philosophies of the ancient Nath tradition. So Nath Yogi chooses to become the supreme power in the universe which they occupy. Guruji will also illuminate the hidden secrets within the Giri Yoga tradition, exploring the depths of its immortal teachings. Oh. Giri Yoga is the mother of all of it. And it comes from the mother herself. She started saying, I want a simpler way to help everyone. So it's not like, I, I don't need name, fame and anything for that. I just want simple ways. And lastly, prepare to have the veil lifted as Guruji demystifies the Aghora tradition giving you insights into its enigmatic practices. That is a path for extreme people. I have traveled on that path. I mean, I had to practice everything. I've done all the bits where you smear yourself with ash and you don't have any clothes. What happens there is you're directly looking for Shiva. To all our viewers, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Your support will help us bring more such transformative videos to you regularly. Guruji, should we start with the, the Nath Parampara and what are the philosophies of the Nath Parampara? Sure. So the, the Nath Parampara, surprisingly, is an all-male parampara. Okay. And, uh, you know, in the other paramparas, you have... I mean, it's very rare to find a female Nath yogis. They exist, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, as the parampara goes, it's, it's all-male. So it started from Shiva. Mm -hmm. And then, like I told you, he went... He went under the ocean to teach the secret Nath Parampara and Parvati fell asleep. Mm. But he didn't uh, stop. He just kept teaching because he can't stop. Once he started teaching, he has to teach. Okay. So he kept talking and then Matsyendra Nath, who is a huge fish, turned into a man and then he started to teach it uh, in, in the land. And he taught Gorakshanath, worshipped in Nepal as, uh, as their ancestor. You know, there is Gorakhpur where he was born. And then he came to Maharashtra. He started a Navnath tradition here in Maharashtra. The, the teachings are absolutely the same. It's what Gorakshana taught. There was a crowd of 3,000 or 6,000 people. But he said only nine of you will understand what I have to say. And those turned out to be the Navnath. Uh, or I think eight of you. It, maybe he was one of the Nats himself in the Navnath tradition. So, Gorakshana is worshipped from the south of India to the north of India. And in Tamil Nadu, he is called Gorakkar. He was known even in Sri Lanka and uh, associated places of the Indian subcontinent. The philosophy of Nath Yoga is to become a master or a Nath or a lord. Nath means master, lord of the universe in which we occupy. So, a Nath Yogi chooses to become the supreme power in the universe which they occupy. 
and therefore it's a very strict and ascetic school it is not for householders it is hard for householders to to be an atyogi some have been and right now there are many akhadas in india i think there are 12 akhadas uh, some of the akhadas are associated with naga yoga but a majority of them are associated with nath yoga so they follow the teachings mainly of gorakshnath and matsyendranath some of the students of these gurus wrote some more books and they called it hatha yoga hatha yoga pradipika yes gheranda samhita these are books exclusively about nath yoga they called it hatha yoga because you need to be very stubborn and you need to like hatha is a feeling of somebody who cannot be moved mm-hmm. and now it's being taught in the west as sun and moon heart ha is like sun and moon and where is all this coming from god knows okay yes <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even i think sadguru teaches hatha yoga <clears throat> yes. they are they're all basically from the nath parampara and nath parampara is uh, is a very ascetic school they usually don't have a huge following or something they have an akhada they teach there and that's it if anybody else wants to learn they have to leave their house and come to the akhada they're not going to learn in any other way so they're very strict about all that and nath yogis nath yogis are generally like brahmacharis they develop their sexual power and they contain it within their body so they take the mula shakti which is there in our muladhara chakra and then they store it in the swadishtana chakra which is associated with the genitals there is a point below your tailbone where the kundalini shakti sits mm-hmm. and that is the point from which uh, massive amounts of energy comes out maintaining and cultivating that energy is called brahmacharya a lot of daoists also do this so daoists are very close to nath yoga tradition agastya himself was also a nath yogi and he was also a giriya yogi and he had many many different lineages including uh, the beginnings of vajra yoga he was teaching even before buddha made it mainstream he was keeping it secret he had all the power so there have been many many nath yogis of note uh, one important nath yogi is the chief minister of uttar pradesh uh, you know adityanath ji and we are very proud that he is selflessly serving the people and which is what nath yogis do okay selflessly serve people mm. that's the whole philosophy of nath yoga what else do you want to know about nath yoga guruji can it be taught online can it uh, can somebody teach it online if there I mean, teach select techniques which are giving people relief online but uh, the entire yoga itself cannot be taught online because it's a lot of study you need to be with a teacher if you want to learn it oh like, go and stay with my guru like he didn't take online class for me <laughs> <laughs> okay Basically, when the when the lo- when the lockdown happened my my guru had given me a prophecy he said you can start teaching when there is no puja offered in the temple for 30 days i'm like that means i'll never teach when will i teach oh okay. i forgotten about it and then he came to remind me he said look 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 see what happened in 2020 it happened yes no puja offered in temples for 30 days i'm like my god it really happened when that happened I, he allowed me to teach he said you now teach and uh, he said you use your brain and teach people online whatever they need to get relief from these three things and get free time the three things are bad relationships bad job bad uh, income and uh, bad health if he, t- he told me teach them how to get relief from these things and then you know you can teach some real yoga so for the first time after 2 years it took me i was only teaching these simple things online but uh, for the first time i'm able to teach uh, a little bit of nath yoga now like the 64 asanas taught by uh, gorakshnath and the 16 adharas taught by him i'm able to teach to people and that's going to create a huge change in their energy level okay so i'm hoping that some of my students will be able to take that energy and create the free time and the space where they can come and learn here uh, directly from me in my side so that's what is happening right now uh, and it's a slow awakening process and even as a guru i had to learn a lot I didn't know where to start honestly that it was such a mess I didn't know where to start <laughs> real yoga and you know people 
they see the yoga i was teaching and they like this is not yoga they they trying to teach me that this is not yoga and i'm like no 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 what you know as yoga is not yoga this is the actual yoga so being very patient and loving because these are my people only i can't start fighting with them i have to be patient that my sanatani brothers and sisters are struggling and they don't know what is yoga and i have to teach them even today when i put up videos people come and give me gyan on how i'm wrong but i just i just delete it i don't start arguments because i know some day they have to come and learn i'm i'm working on i'm in no hurry here i have all the health in the world all the time so it has to be done properly so this online business i'm probably the first one to teach yoga online and to teach uh, some techniques so it works it gets people started online is like an ignition mm-hmm. but then of course you have to take it offline you can't learn everything online so then guruji it's like an initiation into this parampara when you teach it online well not really because okay. that has to be done in person there is a shakti path involved in the initiation okay but uh, at least it's an initiation into the gurukula okay it is not an initiation into the parampara yet okay so people have to earn that they have to work on what i teach them and and get free enough to be able to learn when you get initiated by the parampara when you are you are taken into the parampara you become one of the adhikaris you have the permission to teach that's when it happens okay otherwise you're just in, initiated into the gurukula which is actually my setup over here so yoga is not something that we choose after we are born it's something we choose before we are born so guruji when uh, if somebody is looking at learning nath yoga maybe through your course the 64 day course as well what what kind of people do you think they would be who would be suited for this actually it's surprising all everyone who's contacted me mm-hmm. they they they've all got a strong indication that they are going to help others big time most of so everyone is going to start with their own way you know like you started with these podcasts yes but before yoga you you just had the intention i want to reach people i want to make a massive impact i want to do something but then slowly it starts taking form once you start yoga and now you can see that yeah i know how it's going to go i can see the future you will get more 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 insights into how this is going to grow guruji so what would be the benefits for someone who would learn nath yoga the benefit is you get to st- first and foremost benefit is you get to stop being miserable you just forget how to be miserable that's the, the biggest benefit now after that the benefit is you learn how to help massive amounts of people to do the same stop being miserable when we are all working together on for a purpose which is to make our lives on this planet better but also sustainable like if we have a great life and then we are only torturing all the other species then uh, we are not going to have the full bloom and blessing of nature we have already lost it we have uh, we have been very aggressive towards bhumi devi bhuvaneshwari we have been very ag- aggressive towards her and she is protected by lord vishnu she is one of his wives bhu devi but he rescued her and he brought her and he said i'm going to take care of you and whenever there is adhar on your on your body i will come he protects his wife so the more tortured we do here we are going to get it <laughs> we have to learn how to start loving our earth mother and taking care of her this is very important so anybody who feels strongly about the environment you are a good candidate to learn yoga you have to do something in sustainable right a lot of people are just talk and gas they don't do anything either they get into some kind of protesting or they go and get a grant or a, some kind of funding for their work and then that's it that's the end the end is to get the funding after that they don't do anything and there are some sincere people they get funding they do work and there are other people who actually make themselves sustainable first and then they think about making the earth sustainable because how like it's a joke if you yourself are not sustainable what you'll do that's the problem with a lot of people who want to be activists they themselves are not sustainable their life is in shambles they're going to make the earth okay it doesn't work like that so yoga helps you to personally fix your life first before you help others put on your own mask before you put on others mask you know let's yes. say it in a plane every time you take a plane yes. so put on your own oxygen mask first 
So it is uh, really foolish uh, to go out and help people when we ourselves are struggling. So that's the benefit of learning yoga. Guruji, going to the next uh, school of yoga, Giri Yoga, how would you define the school of yoga? And like a school of secrets. And the some of the techniques are so simple and so powerful that it's been kept secret. Like my guru primarily was famous for teaching Giri Yoga. They taught some part of Giri Yoga, you know. Like you asked me, what can you teach online? should also ask, what can you teach other cultures who have no background in this? That's Kriya Yoga. Kriya Yoga comes from Giri Yoga. Oh. Giri Yoga is the mother of all of it. And it comes from the mother herself, the mother Parvati. She's the one who created Giri Yoga. So whatever uh, Shivji taught her, mm. she made it simple. She's like, Itna mehnat nahi karna hai. I want something suitable for women. Women don't have time to do all this achievement business. Like like men are and have this whole, I can feel good about myself only after I achieve something. Women feel good when others are around them feel good. So she started saying, I want a simpler way to help everyone. So it's not like, I, I don't need name, fame and anything for that. I just want simple ways that that people can understand yoga. So in this yoga, it's very beautiful and it's very sensuous. And it uses a lot of meditation that Vipassana people would run from. Because uh, in Vipassana, they don't like you to get into the mind and the imagination. They just want you to not interact with it. Just let it go. But here it's totally using the imagination to build reality. Shri Vidya comes under this. They say the most sacred tantra, the highest secret Shri Vidya. It is higher than the Dash Mahavidya, they say. So that comes from here. Even the Dash Mahavidya comes from uh, uh, Giri Yoga. The feminine Shakti is also called Vidya. Wisdom. Vidya is not knowledge. Vidya is wisdom. Okay, Knowledge is Gyan. Mm -hmm. And the male energy is called Gyan. <laughs> the male Shakti or the male energy. I can't say the male Shakti. But Shiva himself would be Gyan. But Devi is wisdom. Wisdom is also called Pragya. So what happens in Giri Yoga is the teacher initiates you, gives you some beautiful, beautiful meditations to do. And as you do it, you start to realize, why am I making life so hard? Life is just something so easy. Why am I making it so hard? You know, That's the beauty of, of Giri Yoga. It can be done even by a child. Oh. Uh, in, in the past, the female rishis used to practice this. And so this is a lineage with a lot of women. It's the opposite of Nath Yoga. Okay. Nath Yoga has women very few. Giri Yoga has men like me very few. Okay. <laughs> That's how it is. You have to like awaken your divine feminine. If you, every, Everybody talking about traditions of divine feminine, etc. It comes from Giri Yoga because it comes from Ma Parvati. Everything comes from her. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the Giri Yoga. A lot of the sensuous practices are there in Giri Yoga, which make your body also very beautiful. It makes your eyes very beautiful. It makes you glow. It makes you smell in a very beautiful way and uh, communicate in a different level, non-verbally, just by your presence. That's what it is. A few kings have been guided by Giri Yogis in the past. So many Rajgurus used to be from this tradition. Both male and female, uh, including um, Maharana Pratap. Maharana Pratap's guru was a, a, a Giri Yogi. He was a Raj Guru. Okay. <laughs> they were going to lose that fight to the Mughals. Until the Giri Yogi came, he took charge of everything. And he said, oh. you do this. You do these simple techniques. Meditate on the mother and go and fight. So he did that. And he, he, he was a massive man. I saw his sword in the Udaipur uh, Palace, which is the largest palace in India. I, I saw his sword. It's 40 kgs. The man himself was around seven and a half feet tall. He was a giant. Marana Pratap and his horse Chetak. Chetak. Yeah, very famous, right? Yes. So he was trained by a Giri Yogi and he was trained in one of the secret martial arts of the Giri Yogis called Kalim. Okay. It is the martial art of Kali herself. Their, their war cry was Jai Maha Kali. Even then, they will, it will scare people. So, Giri Yoga has this range of being like crazy like Kali 
violent also if needed and also being gentle like Tripura Sundari beautiful so for war and peace Giri Yoga is quite suited it's an amazing uh, yoga practice but I'm I'm starting now teaching people a little bit of Nath Yoga because I want them to have discipline first mm-hmm. and uh, build a little bit of that energy of, of, of self-control Giri Yoga would be an advanced practice for somebody who's got control over themselves. Directly, it would be hard to teach Giri Yoga. Like you, they could teach someone like Marana Pratap, who is already disciplined. The students of Giri Yoga are very elite. Okay. Even now, it's taught secretly in to a lot of world leaders, I'm sure. Okay. There are a lot of Adhikaris teaching it. Giri Yoga is um, something else. So, Guruji, maybe a lay person who's just starting off into yoga should not really aspire to do that first. Yes, I would I would suggest always start with the simple Hatha Yoga, which I'm teaching. Yeah. Nath Yoga. You go from there because Giri Yoga um, is very simple. But unless you've got control over your passions, if you start Giri Yoga, it's not good to become that powerful so fast when you haven't got control on your mind. That's why I would say aspire for Giri Yoga, of course, but start with yeah. Nath Yoga. Guruji, so, these various sects uh, exist, right? And coming to the next one, Guruji, which is Aghora Yoga. Often misunderstood by a lot of people. And it's really mystical. I, I shot a seven-hour podcast on it with Shweta. And we went out into the mountain, found a place. We did the proper rituals for that place and energized the place. And then we shot a lot of answers. And this was you know, on Siddheshwar Temple. Oh. Uh, here. It's nearby. There's a Siddheshwar mountain. So we went there. And that was the mountain where they used to give human sacrifices earlier in the old days. We went there and uh, prayed to Siddheshwar and we made this podcast. So Agora, Agora is like, you know, there are there are two sides of Shiva, okay? One side is Dakshina Murti, the guru, the teacher of the right hand path, it's called, where he is teaching you how to be in society and how to work as one, one tribe, one community. And how to have prosperity and all the purusharthas and all that, right? But the Aghori is interested only in one purushartha, which is moksha. The Aghori says, I just want to put an end to all the nonsense in my life. And I want it urgently. And that's it. I'll be happy with that. I don't want your wealth. I don't want your fame. I don't want to do anything with society. That is a path for extreme people. I have traveled on that path. I mean, I had to practice everything. I've done all the bits where you smear yourself with ash and you don't have any clothes. What happens there is you're directly looking for Shiva, but you are happy uh, to indulge all of his Shaktis. Like Shakti comes in various forms. Because... Shiva married three sisters. Uh, one is Parvati, of course. One is Ganga, who is her sister. And then there's Ambika, who is also her sister. So he married all the three daughters of Himavan. And uh, there are like various Shaktis that come out of these three deities. And Agura is the worship of some of the dark Shaktis, which are antisocial. We call them dark because they're antisocial. They, they don't fit well in society. So that's why you'll never see Agora getting popular. It's, it's only for those who want to end stuff. They, they, they just want to end uh, all the suffering that's there in their life and in whoever's life comes to them. A lot of people go to Agoris when everything else fails. Mm-hmm. They go to Agoris and then they ask for, they're scared to go to Agoris, but they'll go and then they'll ask, please Baba do this, please Baba do that. Mm-hmm. So one look, the Agoris contain so much power inside himself, just one look and he, he gives them some ash and it's done. Whatever they came to ask for. You go to an agori to ask to end something. You go to an agori to ask for something, it won't happen. You say, I'm getting tortured by my landlord. Can you please end it? And then he gives you some ash and it's done. So they are in another world itself. And, and agora people, they, they also do a lot of substances to get various... Uh, levels of detachment from the world they're not interested to be in the world so they just vanish out of there so that's that's basically what agora is unless you want to be completely antisocial and away from everyone don't don't seek the path of agora and you can go and sit with agoris agoris are there all over the country a lot of them are there in varanasi you can ask around and they'll tell you where the agoris sit 
So you go and uh, tell them that you're done. You're done with all the drama and you really want to understand Shiva. And that's all they want. They don't want anything else. But it's an immortal school. If you really practice Agora, you'll be an immortal. It idealizes Shiva in his ascetic form. Where he was not interested in any more drama after Sati died. Mm-hmm. Sat with her ashes. Okay. And then he became Agora Shiva. When he did that, he's, he smeared her ashes all over his body and he sat. That's it. And nobody is going to disturb me. Until Parvati came along. That phase of Shiva is being worshipped by the Agoris. For he came back to being a householder in social, having like six, seven children. He has a lot of children. I lost count of how many children he has. Shiva has about nine children, I think. Nine to twelve. And according to the various Puranas. But before all that happened, he had to meet Parvati. So Shiva is the one fed up with this. He was like, what is this domesticity? I had a wife and attended like this. Mm. I don't care about anybody. I'm going to just sit down. And it's all an illusion anyway. And it clearly ends badly. And I don't give a shit. This is Shiva sitting in meditation. That's the Agora. So unless you want to invite that kind of energy in your life, don't pursue Agora. And I'm sure it takes a lo- lot of years of your life to get there. Yes, it does. Uh, but then some of the Agora techniques can help you to end stuff really quickly. And I do teach it. I don't tell people it's Agora. So I do teach people techniques to end the noise and the crap in their life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All the horrible things in their life, how to just end it. If somebody is really fed up, then they need need the understanding of Agora. Some people are just like swamped with addictions. They're swamped with with stuff that they don't want is going on and on in their life. So they need some techniques. And I do teach people some of those techniques when it's appropriate. Mm Thank you for joining us today to journey into the heart of yoga. To stay connected and not miss the upcoming episodes, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Your support is invaluable in our mission to bring you more transformative content regularly. So until next time, Namaste.